Hello, welcome to Kubernetes and OpenStack Policy Management. My name is Sam Pilla. I'm Nicholas Helgeson. And I'm Gage Hugo. All right, let's jump right in. So we'll start off with what is Open Policy Agent? Basically, OPA, uh, for short, is an all-in-one policy building uh, solution. It takes all the little parts of what you need for a policy agent, puts it into one, and runs it separately from your actual deployment. So it's not built into, you don't have to worry about uh, getting it to fit into your code base. Um, it's lightweight, easy to use, um, and it's very compatible. Uh, it can, because it's running on the side, uh, you are just sending it queries. Um, so as long as you get queries to OPA, it will send back uh, the, solu or the policy solution from the query that you sent. Um, it is actually built uh, of RESTful APIs. So this means that it can do a lot more than just policy, um, but it is the all-in-one solution as well, so you're not building all the little things. Uh, it's easy to integrate into a current OpenStack system, um, because, and it is independent, as I'll get to in just a sec, um, right here. Basically, as you can see, um, you have your service that sends a query to OPA. Um, OPA, you will have given it the policy and any data it needs. It'll take in the query, and from that policy, or from its data and the policy, it will send you back a decision to your service, which is all run independently from that service itself. So you're not integrating anything crazy. Um, and Nick will sort of get into the nitty gritty about that, sorry. Um, so there are some easy applications for OPA. It um, gives data back as a JSON and YAML file um, data, and it, that makes it really easily integrated with any level of your platform. So it sits on the outside like that. And it's fully customizable outside of the box. Uh, it doesn't come with any preset uh, policies. That can be a double-edged sword, primarily because it's something that you have to all put together all by yourself. But at the same time, you know it's secure because all of the policies that are in, that are in there are policies that you put there. Um, and it uses this language called Rego, which is pretty cool. Uh, so Rego is, at the base, a query language. It's lightweight, easy to use, and it has some aspects of programming language in it. So it's something that you can uh, declare variables um, and set values, and it's easy to get carried away with it, and it really makes a difference um, when trying to use it because it lays things out so easily. Uh, so here's an example of what I'm talking about. Um, you can see that very systematically you've got user Alice method get path to the API. So basically this is laying out that you've got the user, you've got a method, and you've got the API that you want to hit. Uh, so all this would be um, set inside a, an allow statement or a deny statement or however you want to set it. Uh, and then you can also do the same thing, not just for APIs, but for SSH. And then um, what the manager stuff is here is that uh, you can abstract things. So you don't want to have an allow statement or an allow block for each and every uh, user, right? So you can swap out Alice for a variable like employee. And then you can build a list of employees and then a list of managers and how those employees and managers interact. And then that way, basically, you build out a almost coded version of your uh, policies. Uh, but you have to remember not to get carried away because at its base it is a query language and not a programming language, so keep it that way. So one of the main uh, inherent security issues with Docker and Kubernetes is the very default uh, policy. So by default, in like Kubernetes, someone can just simply run kube control delete pods, which if you're running a huge cloud with a Kubernetes control plane, you really don't want that to happen. So by using OPA, you can block off anyone from doing that except a very select person. Um, however, when you're running like Kubernetes and OpenStack, the policy between them doesn't naturally fit. So by rerouting all of these policy enforcement to OPA, you can have a potential, potential solution However, through OpenStack, you will, you will need to use like Oslo Policy and Keystone for the enforcement on there. 
Um, Kubernetes, the best security practices is like using RBAC, allocating resource, network segmentation, and then like vulnerability scanning. These are just all list of things that OPA can help you with. So the main use case for OPA with OpenStack is have it act as a uh, policy decision point or PDP, just an external, everything policy is done in this external PDP. Um, this tape would take the work out of all the different services, so like all the policy in Nova, Keystone, Neutron, Glance, Cinder, that would be pulled out and all done through OPA, which is nice because you no longer have to have like separate policy files for each thing. It's all done through OPA and centralized, much easier to manage. So if you're a large organization with many policies, it's just one place you can edit it all. And then the use for that would be, like I said before, we would use Oslo policy to enforce that through Keystone but OPA would be the centralized location for it all. Uh, that's mostly all we got. Um, here are the references from our talk. Uh, check out OPA, it looks amazing. Um, the potential there is great. Uh, having a centralized PDP would be amazing. And that's all we got. Any questions? I don't know if we have a mic or. Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, through also policy. Yeah. You're talking about through your own app, right? Yeah, it's 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 a different structure in OPA then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, not currently. Um, so that I mean that's that's a great question. No. So. Like I said before, I mean, it would be great if we could. Um, you said you were saying with Congress. Have you heard of the Congress project? Okay. Okay. Yes. I would think I would think the work would have to be done with Oslo policy, for the most part. Um, the like you said, the uh, transformation between the two. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how that would work out, to be honest, right now. But that would need to be addressed for sure. That would have to. That would probably be one of the top priorities.
Uh, I, I think they have a GitHub. It's an ephemeral idea right now. 